I started this project before I got sick, and it broke my heart to delay it as long as I had to. But we got it finished, and we're going to show it to you when we come back. Don't go away. Hey everybody and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I'm Paul coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And indeed, I am so excited about this project. I started this before I got sick and so it was 80% done and I've been sitting on it and jonesing to finish this thing. It is going to blow your socks off. I'm telling you, this thing is pretty amazing. So let's get right to it. Okay, so today I'm going to be tackling the heavyweight fire truck. And I got to tell you, uh, I stayed away from this for a while, um, frankly, because I thought it was kind of ugly. Um, the, the front and the back didn't match, you know, and just I, I, I wasn't really thrilled about tackling this. Uh, but then I, I hit upon a plan in my head and decided to give it a go and uh, actually going into it now I'm, I'm kind of excited as you can see the tractor is really simple a couple wheels a little metal base and one rivet and the back is just this really ugly molded red plastic thing that that takes it from Hot Wheel to I don't know Playmobil or something like that it looks like garbage and it's on this little metal base so I, I really hated the way it looked, but I have a plan for this sucker, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, base is just snap fit into this plastic body, and then the fun part is the dually wheels. I really like those, although they confused me at first. So there really wasn't anything to show you in taking it apart. It was just one simple little rivet for the tractor, and in the trailer it was just a... a flexing the plastic body enough to clear the little locking tabs on the base and the whole thing just came apart and so here we have it and really the only thing to drop into the warm liquid goo phase is this little front end of the body and that's that's all that needs stripping the rest uh, needs other attention so into the warm liquid goo it goes and we can take a look at this ugly ugly trailer body I started by taking a file and uh, just kind of sanding down some of the play-worn edges to kind of even them up and square them up because, you know, some of them were ground down a little bit. And so this just kind of uh, gave it a, a more, um, a newer look, so to speak, you know, got rid of some of the, the fuzzy edges. So, you know, uh, just a little bit of a file and some sandpaper. Then, uh, uh, a little bit of work with a Tamiya sanding sponge and some Gooby Gone uh, because this had these uh, clear stickers on them and after peeling them off I, I gotta hand it to them they were really sticky but after peeling them off they left a lot of adhesive behind so uh, the whole thing gets a quick little bit of a sanding and use the Gooby Gone in there to get rid of all the uh, schemots left behind by the decals and get this thing all cleaned up and as nice looking as possible. My biggest issue with this whole uh, diecast car was the fact that the, uh, the back was made out of molded plastic and didn't match the, uh, the tractor. So I'm gonna fix that in this build everything is going to match front and back. So we've got to get this thing really, really clean and get all the gooby gone off because uh, this trailer is getting painted. Oh yeah. So it's going to get a Spectra Flame paint job just like the tractor. So here it is. It's all cleaned up and it's looking pretty good in my book. So to make the tractor and trailer match, I'm going to have to paint them exactly the same way. So I'm going to start by priming both of them with some Tamiya Fine Primer. Um, this will give me an even consistent base on both the tractor and trailer, and that way when they, we get to the final painting, it will match up. So we're going to go ahead and hit it with just a, a quick little coat of the primer 
on the back. We're going to get the, the front that's been taken out of the, uh, the uh, stripper and washed and scrubbed. And, uh, you know, normally I pay a lot of attention to the, to the metal bodies, but in this case I'm not really going to need to because although it's going to be a spectroflame looking finish at the end, uh, I'm really using an opaque method, uh, so it really doesn't matter what the body looks like underneath it, hey, because I'm hitting it with primer. So we'll just hit this thing all up, front and back, all the sides with the primer, and then we're going to do the exact same thing with the uh, tractor. Uh, that way we get a paint job that will match all the way around. Now, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you've seen me do one of my pseudo Spectraflame paint jobs uh, where, you know, Spectraflame is basically a clear paint over a polished metal surface. Um, the pseudo Spectraflame paint job, we're going to simulate that by painting everything with this AK Interactive uh, Chrome paint. And that's going to give us that metallic base that we're going to need to get the Spectraflame paint to look like Spectraflame paint. So we've primed everything. It's nice and dry. We're going to load up this AK paint and we're going to lay down a nice chromey finish on both the tractor and the trailer. And then once that's dry, we can turn to some Spectraflame red. Well, this sure isn't the way I would normally choose to do a Spectraflame paint job, but it is a great tool to have in your arsenal. Uh, you're going to have those cars where the bodies are just so bad that a Spectraflame paint job on top of them is going to look like garbage. Uh, or in this case, where you're trying to match two completely separate pieces. So this is a, a really important uh, tool to have. And uh, it, it'll bail you out uh, on projects where the bodies are just garbage and you're looking to uh, do a Spectraflame finish. And now, I've got a lot of painting to do, so I'm going to mix up a little bit more than double of uh, the amount of Spectraflame paint I would normally mix. So I'm just uh, putting it in my little mixing cup and then I'm going to get a little bit of hardener and mix it in with the paint. I don't need to worry about putting too much in. Uh, because I'll put uh, a lot of extra hardener into the clear coat when I come back and put that on later in the project. All right, I've got the uh, Spectraflame paint and the hardener thoroughly mixed up and looking good, and so we're about ready to paint. So before I do, I'm going to hit the uh, spray booth with a little misting of water just to kind of knock down any floating uh, dust particles or woolly boogers or anything like that that's going to land in my paint job. Okay, so I loaded up my airbrush cup and uh, I did a little test spray to make sure everything's flowing properly and now it's time to paint. I'll start by giving both the tractor and trailer a little bit of a tack coat to help things bite. And then, uh, because I really want this to be a very deep and rich red, I'm going to put on several coats, more than I, I normally would. And most of those will come in the middle. So after this uh, little bit of a tack coat, when I'm doing the, the medium coats, I'm going to put a lot of those on to build up the color and get this thing to be a little bit closer to like a maroon rather than just a bright red. And then uh, once I've got a, a nice deep color going, then I can wrap everything up with a couple of nice heavy wet coats to give it that beautiful glossy sheen that uh, really makes the paint job pop.
Okay, so the uh, the color is really starting to to pop. It's really getting very very saturated and deep and lustrous. Um, making sure that I'm I'm trying to be as equal as possible between the tracker and the trailer. So if I put a coat on the tracker, put a coat on the trailer. Uh, the last thing on earth I want to happen is for the color on one piece or the other to, to be noticeably different. So uh, it's really important here that as I'm putting the coats on, I'm, I'm doing the exact same thing in the exact same way on both pieces. Okay, so the paint job is looking amazing. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with the color and the fact that both the tractor and trailer match. So we can go ahead and set them aside to dry, and while that is happening, we can turn our attention to the base. Yeah, the base is pretty ugly, and some of it is actually very prominent in this model. So uh, I'm going to have to spend a little bit of extra time in, in polishing this up. I did take the, uh, the base for the tractor and the trailer uh, down for a little bit of zinc plating and uh, did a little bit of a wire wheel and some polish and a little bit of all of that. And yeah, then I sealed everything up on the base using a little bit of Renaissance wax uh, to help make sure that it stays nice and shiny. But uh, this wasn't the place to start uh, cutting corners, so to speak, because too much of it is visible in this model. So you really need to pay a lot of attention where what you're doing here. I can't tell you how excited I am at this point. Uh, we're really starting to be able to see the finish line here and this was a project I started a long time ago and had to shelve when I got sick so it was really exciting for me to get uh, uh, back to this project because I really had a good vision for it in my head and uh, I just wanted to see um, how this thing would come out in the end so uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm feeling it right now alright so um, one of the holdups on the project was decals. I had had some decals made by a vendor, and uh, they they were all right, but I didn't love them. And it wasn't the vendor's fault because I did the art, but they were all just plain white, and I thought they weren't doing this thing justice. And so I decided I wanted metallic chrome uh, decals, and. Uh, I, I tried working with a, a vendor to get that, and there, there were some issues in getting that done. Uh, so I uh, decided I was going to have to make them myself. So I invested uh, a pretty good chunk of change in an Alps printer, which will allow me to print my own water slide decals on clear backing, uh, including uh, these foils. So I took the decals I had designed, and uh, after I got my printer and got it all set up, I uh, printed them myself using the gold foil, and they came out amazing. I cannot tell you how badass these decals came out. And uh, as, as for making decals and the Alps printer, uh, keep watching the channel because I'm going to be talking a lot about making your own decals the Alps printer, how it does, what it does, and so on and so forth. So keep watching if you want to know more about that. But at the end of the day, trust me when I tell you that these gold foil decals on this deep, deep, beautiful, glossy red fire engine, it's just going to look amazing. So after the decals thoroughly dried, I uh, went ahead and laid down a beautiful, nice, wet, clear coat over the top of everything to seal the decals in and to just really give this thing that uh, amazing, shiny, glossy finish. Um, now it's time to do a little detail painting. Uh, I need to paint the hose in the hose bed 
and some of the gauges on the top and some of the little chrome handles for opening the doors and such. So uh, right here I'm just going to use a little uh, Vallejo Desert Sand and uh, paint the, uh, the hose in the hose bed and I'll just work my way around uh, the vehicle nice and slowly making sure I'm using my magnifying visor because I can't see anything um, and just taking my time and doing a nice job. Now a, a really nice thing here is because this is already painted and sealed up in a, uh, uh, a urethane clear coat uh, I'm using just a, a water-based acrylic from Vallejo here and so if I have any issues it's not going to be really difficult for me to get it off without ruining the entire uh, fire truck. So I, it doesn't mean I'm not going to be careful. I'm going to try and do it right the very first time. But I, I have that in my back pocket should uh, something go, go awry. With the detail painting done, I can go ahead and turn my attention to the wheels, which on this vehicle are cap-style wheels. Uh, they were really confusing to me at first, as this has dualies on the back of the tractor and on the back of the trailer. And I was like, where do you get dually wheels? Well, the cap goes over the uh, second half. So basically, the back half of what normally would be a cap wheel is uh, different. It's thicker and it looks like a second wheel. You snap the uh, cap over the top of that, and lo and behold, you have a dually set. So it wasn't really a big deal, and uh, I snapped on some nice brand new uh, wheels uh, from Bright Vision, and the thing is looking amazing. This is going to just be wicked when it's done. I can't wait. Now, sometimes on these reproduction uh, glass pieces, um, gauzy and the, the whatever these people are making these windows out of, sometimes they just don't cooperate as well as I'd like them to. And this is one of those cases. Yes, it made it nice and, and super shiny and, and looked great, but there was like this uh, almost uh, weird texture in one area of the windshield. I was kind of unhappy with it. Um, at some point I, I may order another windshield and and try and adjust that or, or whatever uh, but for now it was it was fine and frankly the other windshield had a big giant crack in it uh, so I'm gonna have to stick with this but it may be something that I do in the future. I, I may change this windshield out. Uh, I just wasn't happy with the way it uh, came out. All right, so we are nearing the finish line here, and uh, now I'm taking a look at the interior, and, and frankly, uh, I wanted to detail it because uh, it's underneath this big, giant window, so you can see right in there, but honestly, there's not a lot to detail in here. There's a few gauges and a little uh, command panel, and that's about it, so I'm just gonna hit those up with a little bit of flat black paint, and uh, call it a day, but uh, you know, I, I, if there was more detail there, I would have done it, but there isn't. So hey, I'll just do what's there and live with it. With that last little bit of detail painting, I think we've got pretty much everything done, and now it's just a matter of putting this sucker together. So the windshield goes in nicely. That I, I will say that for this aftermarket windshield, it fit fine. Uh, it goes in a little bit weird, so you got to kind of pay attention to that. And then we can go ahead and drop the the interior in, and then we can bring over the base. And with one button head screw, we can go ahead and seal this sucker up for good. And as to the back of the the fire truck. Uh, it was really easy to just snap that back onto the base. And while I didn't show it to you in this video, uh, yeah, I am a complete dumbass. 
And uh, just like in my last week's video, the uh, the Shelby Turbin, uh, same thing on this one. I forgot to drill out the post beforehand. So, uh, yeah, I had to go back after the paint job and everything and drill this post out. Fortunately, it went well, and it came out great, and the truck screwed together perfectly, and it's looking amazing. And now for the final touch. I don't know why Hot Wheels chose to give this vehicle absolutely no emergency lighting, but that ain't going to work for me. So I am taking a light bar off a green light uh, police, what is it? It's a uh, Bronco. It's like a police Bronco. And I cut the light bar off of that. I figure I can use the Bronco for a million other projects. Uh, I cut the light bar off of it and I'm going to glue it using my Extreme Power Thick Super Glue. And I'm going to glue it right to the top of this fire truck, sort of like the cherry on the top of the cake. It's going to just look beautiful. Alright, so with the light bar firmly affixed to the top of the tractor, I can call this sucker done. So let's go ahead and take a look where we ended up. All right, there you have it, the heavyweight fire truck. Oh my gosh, it came out beautiful. You just can't even imagine up close and personal this deep, glorious red and the gold uh, decals and just all everything about it. It really looks amazing. And and that's not being said because you know I'm a retired firefighter and so I have an affinity for fire trucks. But leaving that all aside, this is absolutely going to be one of my favorite models uh, of all time. I'm so excited about the way it came out. It is just stinking beautiful. Uh, I couldn't be happier with it. And this is how it should have looked coming from Hot Wheels. So, hey, you know, end of the day, it came out great and I love it. I hope you enjoyed every bit of this and I hope you enjoyed the finished product. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, click subscribe and click the little bell. You'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. All right, this is Paul. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope you have an amazing, fantastic day where your successes just bring a giant smile to your face. And until next time, be good.